Welcome to this live broadcast of our virtual meeting. This meeting includes the remote participation of members as authorized under Minnesota statutes, section 13D.021, due to the declared local health pandemic. The city will be recording and posting this meeting to the city's website and YouTube channel as a means of increasing public access and transparency. This meeting is public and subject to the Minnesota Open Meeting Law. I'm Barry Clegg and I'm the chair of the redistricting group. I'll now call this meeting to order and ask the clerk to call the roll. Group member Abbott. Group member Aaron. Here. Group member Callanan. Here. Group member Carey. Here. Group member Cohen. Here. Group member Davis Carter. Here. Group member Garcia. Present. Group member Ginder. Group member Johnson. Here. And I'm sorry, I skipped group member Hawkins, but she is excused today. Uh, group member Kim. Here. Group member Kozak. Here. Group member Mogan. Here. Group member Mechi is excused. Group member Newborn. Group member Newhouse. Present. Group member Perry. Here. Group member Rubenstein. Here. Group member Russell. Group member Sandberg. Group member Shaw is excused. Group member Schwarzkopf. Present. Group member Smith. Here. Group member Abbott. Group member Ginder. Group member Newborn. Group member Russell and Chair Clegg. Here. There are 17 members present. And let's watch for um, group member Ginder because I think he was on earlier but was having trouble with his microphone. But we do have a quorum, so we'll now proceed to our agenda, a copy of which was posted for public access to the city's legislative information management system, which is available at LIMS, L-I-M-S dot Minneapolis Min dot gov. The agenda is before us. Do I have a motion to approve? Move, Perry. Second, Lord Fox. Been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion of the proposed agenda? Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Group member Abbott. Group member Aaron. Here. Could you vote aye or nay? I, I'm sorry, aye. Thank you. Group member Callanan? Aye. Group member Carey? Aye. Group member Cohen? Group member Davis Carter? Aye. Um, did you call my name? I'm Cohen. I didn't hear my name being called. Yes, group member Cohen? Uh, uh, aye. All right. Group member Garcia. Aye. Group member Ginder. Group member Johnson. Aye. Group member Kim. Aye. Group member Kozak. Aye. Group member Magan. Aye. Group member Newborn. Group member Newhouse. Aye. Group member Perry. Aye. Group member Rubenstein. Aye. Group member Russell. Group member Sandberg. Aye. Group member Schwarzkopf. Aye. Group member Smith. Aye. 
Group member Abbott. Group member Ginder. Group member Newborn. Group member Russell. And Chair Clake. Aye. There are 17 ayes. The um, agenda is adopted. There's one set of minutes from the regular meeting on October 20th, a week ago. May I please have a motion to accept the minutes? Moved, Ferry. Thanks, Ward Goff. And moved and seconded. Is there any discussion or are there any corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll on the minutes? Group member Abbott. Group member Aaron. Aye. Group member Kalanen. Aye. Group member Carey. Aye. Group member Cohen. Aye. Group member Davis Carter. Aye. Group member Garcia. Aye. Group member Ginder. Group member Johnson. Aye. Group member Kim. Aye. Group member Kozak. Aye. Group member Magan. Aye. Group member Newborn. Group member Newhouse. Aye. Group member Perry. Aye. Group member Rubenstein. Aye. Group member Russell. Group member Sandberg. Group member Schwartzkopf. Aye. Group member Smith. Aye. Group member Abbott. Group member Ginder. Group member Newborn. Group member Russell. And Chair Clegg. Aye. There are 17 ayes. That motion carries and the minutes are adopted. Next item is the chair's report, and I don't have anything to report that's not otherwise on the agenda. So we'll move on to item five, which is to review draft maps. And today we're looking at maps of park board districts. I thought it would be easier for us to park, start with park board districts since there are only six of them. And uh, then we could work our way up to the more complex ward maps at our next session. I ask those of you who wished to to submit on redistrict R a uh, draft park board maps and there were six total maps submitted. My plan is to ask each person who submitted a map for a brief description, not to exceed two minutes or so. Uh, Mr. Munson will put those maps up on the screen and we can look at them and after all six have been introduced, we can talk about them. I think there were a lot of similarities in these maps because there's only so much you can do with the over under variations that we have uh, for park board districts. In fact, um, I'm going to withdraw my map. I put a map, I submitted a map as well as a conversation starter, but there were a number of other maps submitted, uh, some of which were similar to mine, but um, I'm going to withdraw mine just so the chair is not doesn't have a proposal on the floor. Commissioner Kozak, before we begin, did you have a question? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, and I, this might be a, a question for Mr. Munson. Um, as you told us a couple weeks ago, it was kind of fun to do these maps, and once you get the hang of it, how to, how to have a big crayon or a little brush or whatever. And uh, but I had trouble. I've done, uh, had three or four tries and I almost got done. And when I tried, I saved, but I didn't, unfortunately, I, I should have saved the URL and I know in small print it says to do that. Uh, and I will try to remember to do that next time. But then how do you retrieve it? And I, I don't know if I'm the only dumb one on the, you know, on the call here, but uh, then when, when you, punch into the uh, the link, uh, how do you retrieve the map you already did, that in, at least in draft form? And maybe Mr. Munson could just send, <laughs> I listened to the video a couple times, which is very good, uh, but I, I did not 
I did not get that. How to how to retrieve it once you've saved it? Yes, maybe, you need, maybe I can start. You can yeah, go ahead. call up any map, including one of your own or one of somebody else's, just by uh, using that URL that is assigned to your map and putting that in the address box. Okay. If you if you do manage to save it and submit it, you can still retrieve it and uh, modify it if you wish. So you can retrieve submitted maps, post them in District R. So if you like somebody else's as a starting point, but you wanna work on it or move a few things around, you can start with theirs, move a few things around and then submit it as yours. Mr. Munson, do you have anything to add? Um, so one of the tech guys here discovered today that you can do a search in Districtor um, by date. So um, it it may be out there still if you wanted to do a search in Districtor, um, but otherwise, yeah, if you start from scratch. And um, Member Carson, are, are you going directly to Districtor or are you going through the portal at MinneapolisMN.gov? Because I, I go right to the district. So it would be better if you went via the MinneapolisMN.gov portal and it'll be very obvious about it'll have you save and then submit and then you can always go in and adjust it after the fact. It will post publicly, but um, it, it will be out there for you to find. You have, you have to save or copy down the URL number that seven. Yeah a number, a yes. four a digit number. Okay. Yeah. My, my little trick was emailing it, copying it and emailing it to myself so that I couldn't forget it. So yeah, that's, that's the usual way to do it. Thank you. That's <laughs> this is sure. All right. Let's, let's move on with the proposed maps then. Okay. I'm going to call on the submitters in alphabetical order. And the first um, map was group member Callan. Um, group member, I did notice when I looked at your map and opened it in Districtor, that it had a 13.47% uh, deviation. Um, and I know that you and your description say it was down to 2.7%. So I'm wondering if it was, or 2.38%. I'm wondering if, if uh, some other version was saved as the final version. So um, I was having some problems um, with accessing the, the map making tool um, on my MacBook Air. I wonder if anybody else has um, been using an Apple laptop to to do it and what browser you're using because when I call tech support, he said that the Google Chrome browser might be the problem. So then I tried it in Safari and I played with the map and then when I finished it, and I saved it. I didn't get a pop up that said to submit it. Um, so I copied the URL from the map that I made and posted that in my submission. And it does that doesn't look like my map. So anyway, the visual I think is, the map uh, that's showing on the screen is actually the current um, distance. Yeah. Right. That's that's what I thought too. It looked like the current districts. So, so it, that was what I was showing, but it should be showing yours now, Member Callanan. Do you, do you see it now? No. Huh, that's weird because uh, does it does it change for you? There's the yeah. There's the standard mine. one. Okay, and then this should be yours, no, Member Callanan. See, that's the same. So um, anyway, some of the other maps that have been submitted were similar to mine, so we can go on and discuss them. But I can briefly describe what I did. Um, in um, the blue district, uh, they believe that is district, district. one, I, I cut off uh, a whole section of the southeast Minneapolis neighborhood and put that into um, district three. And that increased the, um, well, brought the, the district one down closer to where it needed to be. And then um, district three was that was not big enough. And so I added in some of the neighborhoods from District 5, the pink one. And um, so I, I removed the Longfellow neighborhood and half of the central neighborhood and put that um, in District 5. So that made five more balanced. And then in District 6, which was way low, um, I added in that whole section by Bidet McCoska as you can see to the to the 
east side of Bede Makaska and um, the area, the neighborhoods that are south of Lake of the Isles and south of Cedar. And that brought District 6 up to where it needed to be. Um, and then for the downtown district, I added in a little bit over there um, by the Target Center. And that balanced out the district. Um, what's that olive green one? Uh, district 4. So anyway, I tried to stay within the neighborhoods and honor as many of the boundaries as I could. But for a visual, let's go on to some of the other ones that actually um, were very, very similar. And I'll keep trying to figure out if anybody has any ideas about how to access the, the maps um, from a MacBook computer. Um, what, what browser are you using? Um, because like I said, Chrome didn't work at all and Safari didn't really save my map um, the way I wanted it to. Thank you. Um, let's move on, but we do, do need to figure out a way to resolve your technical problem before we get to the ward maps. So uh, maybe we can arrange a, a consult with city tech staff uh, if necessary to work through it. Okay, thank you. The next submission is group member Johnson. Johnson. Can you click group member Johnson's map. Up? I can. Thank you, Chair Clinton. All right, you should see it up there right now. And very similar to Grimmer Callahan's description, I think we had quite a few pieces that overlapped on this. Um, some specific things uh, for the Ward 3 and 1 boundary, so the turquoise and the blue, I did something very similar with uh, part of Prospect Park uh, moving from Park District 1 into Park District 3. Uh, it just it has to cross the river there uh, for one of them just because uh, Park District 1 needs to shrink a little bit. Uh, the other big change was five in pink. I moved north in the Longfellow neighborhood, I believe also very similar to uh, what was just described. Uh, very similar as well uh, between uh, District 6 in purple and in green with four. I moved the border uh, by uh, Bede Makaska up, uh, made it a, a much more east-west line across there, and then also went a little further than that uh, just to try to balance the population a little bit further. Uh, up north of uh, Lake of the Isles and Cedar Lake, uh, just because that uh, made the, the districts a little bit uh, closer balanced. And then one uh, different thing that I did do, uh, looking at the neighborhood maps and also just looking at the geography. And again, I know you can't zoom in on this particular view unless you're in uh, District R, but- I, I, wait. I, can zoom. I can zoom in. Okay, yeah, if you don't mind. Um, yeah. On the border between two and, and four, uh, there's actually one small bit of the neighborhood that was on sort of the other side of the 394 off ramps. It didn't make a lot of sense to me that that would be attached on to four when you couldn't even walk between the two very easily. So I did move those two uh, small uh, uh, blocks uh, over into uh, District 2. That was the only other distinctive change here. And if you're able to show the uh, the current boundaries on this map versus the the one I proposed, you'll be able to see that border. But well, yeah, just to the right of where your uh, cursor is, is where I move those uh, couple uh, tracks over. Okay. Mr. Munson, can you overlay the, the current district boundaries on this, or do you have to be in district or I, to do that? Yeah, I would have to open it up in district, or which I can do if. Let's, Chuck, let's, wait, let's wait until we've um, okay. gone through the list and then we'll see. Yeah, yep. We might only have to do that with one or two of them. Okay. So the next map is group member Kim. Whoops, yeah. that's chair clicks. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess uh, great minds think alike because my changes that I proposed were almost identical to group member Johnson's. I think I made maybe slightly fewer changes on the uh, boundary between uh, districts three and five. Um, I pretty much just kept it to moving uh, all of the Howe neighborhood uh, into district five. Um, and then in the boundary between districts four and six, uh, I pretty much just kept it to the uh, east Bede Makaska neighborhood. Um, but yeah, I, we had the same, we, used, we both used University Avenue as the divider between districts one and three. And we both had the same idea for the 
unifying the North Loop neighborhood uh, under District 2. Good, thank you. Uh, the next map was submitted by group member Sandberg. Your, your volume is too low, Commissioner. Oh, Group Member Sandberg. Is this better? A little, but not good enough. Uh, why don't you go to somebody else and let me reset? I don't know why that's not working. Great. Let's try, go to try somebody else. Let's. It actually works better. Uh, it's, it's sounded better in the last couple of remarks that you made. Okay, you want to try that? I'll be have very quick remarks. Okay, go ahead. Okay. The only thing I was trying to do was as a first cut was just to look at whether it was possible to have whole neighborhoods within the wards, the, uh, the districts and not cut up the neighborhoods at all. So that's not really the best, I think, primary focus, but it was interesting to try and do it. The one thing I ran into was, or several things were that um, the census tracks didn't align with the neighborhoods all the time. And so I had a couple of places where it was impossible to not breach a neighborhood boundary because of the way the census tracks laid out. Um, so it's not a great map. I think there's others that are much better, but it was an interesting experiment. And I used a PC with a Chrome browser and it was fine. So. All right, thank you. Um, group member Schwarzkopf. Is this my first one or second one? Oh, this is my first one. I this just submitted the, one about um, 30 the minutes ago. Um, but says, oh, uh, yeah, this, this is from earlier today. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. Um, Oh, this is the one I just submitted earlier today. What, no, this is the one. You, this is the first one you submitted. Okay, very good. Yeah, what I tried to do is I tried to get the deviation down, and on this one I got it down to one point one deviation. The second one I got it down to point two three deviation. So it's much better. Uh, what I tried to do is I tried to keep um, the Longfellow area uh, around Longfellow Park. And I uh, moved up into the southeast Minneapolis, brought that into, uh, I think, it was District 3 in order to bring down District 1. Um, and also then I made some changes over in the southwest area, but uh, relatively minor. And by and large, what I was working on is really the uh, boundaries of the deviation. Okay, so I Sorry, Member Schwarzkopf? Yeah, that's all I got to say on that one. Um, and that's it for the maps that were submitted. Why don't, why don't we take uh, either questions for the submitters or comments, and then we'll see if we can come to consensus uh, at least as a place to start. Uh -huh. I would just say, I would just say first that, um, you know, this is our first map, not our final map. It's our preliminary map. So the goal here is is a minimum change map um, to get the conversation started. To the extent um, we want to make deviations or move things around a little more, at, at least in my mind, that's the job of the final map. It also, I would, say, I would say that in, in, in my view anyway, um, that 5% is, is latitude that we can play with. Um, and we can use that if we want to, to make neighborhoods whole, uh, to uh, keep communities of interest together, or to create uh, minority opportunity districts. And for example, I'll, I'll remind the group that the last time we did this, the last time around, keeping the east side together as one park district meant we had, it was like a 4.99 over deviation but that's what enabled us to keep the east side together. We can't do that this time because the deviation has gotten bigger, but that's how I see us using those deviations is to keep communities of interest together. So I'll call on anybody else who has a question or a comment. 
Uh, Chair Clegg, I also submitted one uh, which has got a 0.23 deviation, which is very, very small. And is that some district this awards? One. I think I saw that. Was that park district or awards? The park district, I submitted it about uh, two, about 3.30 this afternoon. Oh, okay. I... I'm sorry. <laughs> can, can you show that, Mr. Munson? I can. Let's see. Uh, here it is. All right. Again, this is very similar to the one I had before, except uh, I've taken out um, the little bit, bit that dropped down into the southwest Minneapolis from um, from the uh, blue area, uh, from the uh, orange, well, was a green area, I guess it is. And then uh, I moved into the um, south, southeast of Minneapolis, a little less than what I did on the other one. But the key thing here is I got it down to a 2.4 deviation. I'll just throw that one out too. That's all I got to say, thank you. All right, thank you. Does anybody have any questions or comments before we start talking about uh, specific changes that we want to incorporate in our final proposed map? Member Callanan. Um, the park board district boundaries also make up the school board uh, district boundaries for the six members of the school board who are um, represent their districts and, and they're not at large members. And so um, I'm thinking in particular about the southeast neighborhood. Um, I think some people call it Prospect Park and that neighborhood is already aligned with some of the schools that are on the other side of the river, like Sanford Middle School and South High School. And so it makes good sense to include all of that neighborhood in um, District 3, um, even though it's on the other side of the river. The other thing I wanted to bring up was there was a map of a community of interest that had to do with the area around the university. And I wasn't able to look at that in match it up to what people had proposed. Um, so I'm wondering if um, Mr. Munson can pull up that community of interest map. It just shows this little tiny I can. section. Yes, it's... Um... I think it's on an earlier page. Let's see. Yep, right here. Yep, West Bank Unity is what it's called. Submitted by Goldie Golf Gopher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if we include all of that area with the rest of Southeast Minneapolis, which includes like Pratt Elementary School and um, you know, all the way over to the South, the St. Paul border um, and including that with District 3 that might keep that community of interest together rather than splitting this little bit off to um, District 1 Northeast Minneapolis. That's all. Thank you. I, I would say that um, Although the school district has elected to use the park district boundaries, boundaries, they are not required to do so. They can set their own boundaries and they have elected to use the park district boundaries just because they are similarly organized with six districts. But our, our job here is to draft board and park district. Um, and we can certainly keep what the school board might do in mind, but they don't have to do it. They don't have to follow the maps that we create. Uh, are any other comments or questions? Uh, group member Johnson. Go ahead, group member Johnson. Thank you. Yeah, I, th I think one of the things we're going to face with both, I mean, Parks District to some extent, but certainly for the wards, is how to think about 
the university and the student population itself, which is not just the university campus, but the surrounding area with high student population. You know, do we think of them as a community of interest? Do we think of them as needing to be in one particular ward or in this case, park district? Uh, that's only something that I struggled with drawing the park district map and some of the things I've done with the ward as well. So when I was thinking about this for the park district, you know, West Bank, I, I kept in three. And then on the other side of the river for Prospect Park, you know, I did not include that as you know being the, the high student population area. And that seems similar to what others maybe were thinking. But if we can maybe explore just sort of how to treat the student population quickly, maybe that's worthwhile for a, a quick conversation now and maybe some notes later for how we treat wards when drawing those maps. Any comments on the university, um, on how we treat the university? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Member Rubenstein. Thank you. Um, I, I think that these points are well taken, but I'm very concerned about combining the air, the university community on the West Bank with the rest of the community only because the West Bank represents a greater other communities of interest and particularly the Somali community. And um, it may have more in common with other communities of interest than students. So it's just something to think about as well. Any other comments? Mr. Chair. Um, I see, remember Newhouse has a comment. Remember Newhouse? Yes, I, I, would, I would agree with the previous comment in that having worked on um, political engagement and voter engagement extensively with the university uh, population over the last four years. If there is one um, big overarching characteristic about the student population is that they all are very different. They all identify with a lot of other communities across our city and not necessarily as much as a singular um, um, community. I mean, they are a community and that they all go to school. Um, it's kind of like also looking at like the difference between the school population, the student population at Augsburg University versus the adjacent U of M population. The, the students are all unique in that they, they represent many different communities. And if you ask them, as I have worked with them over the past little bit, in general, there's a greater sense that they represent other communities before they represent the student community. I would also point out that um, in the university area, the greatest park amenities, the greatest park amenity is the river. Um, so we may treat it differently for park uh, districts and for wards, but for park districts, at least throughout the city, what we've tried to do is make is give uh, different park districts having jurisdiction over opposite sides of the river. So more than one park commissioner has a voice in uh, how the river, which is one of our greatest park amenities is treated. Anybody else? Um, Mr. Chair Schwarzkopf. Go ahead, Member Schwarzkopf. Uh, when I drew one of my uh, maps for the uh, boards, I tried to put the university in both the uh, west side and the east side together, as well as the College of Augsburg College, and then Fairview Hospital and also University Hospital, which are part of the same thing. So I tried to draft it so all those communities would be in the same um, same ward. Can I suggest that we go back to um, either the Kim or the Johnson map, whichever one you can get to the fastest? Here, uh, there's member Kim's map. I, I think um, what most of the maps that we've looked at tonight have in common, start with an easy one, is um, moving the Macaska, East the Macaska neighborhood from six into four. Uh, because that increases the population of six and takes away from four. Um, I think we saw that in almost every case. Is there any objection to doing that? 
And what I'd like to do is just go through this stuff and where there's no objection, we'll just sort of build our map. And if there is an objection, we'll discuss and if necessary vote. But um, this seems to be one thing the maps all had in common. So is there any objection to saying, let's move East Bidet Makaska from six to four? Uh, Chair Clegg, just a, a process question. Go ahead. Uh, is it possible for us to actually do this in district or where we can see the current district boundaries? I, I have no objection to using sure. um, Remember Kim's map. I think it's, again, a very good starting place. I was wondering if we can pull that up with the, the boundaries as was more visible for everyone. Um, yeah. Mr. Munson, do you mind pulling it up and then you'll have to paint as we as we talk. But yes, here we go. Let me. And you have some. another screen so you can There's flip back. That. Um, no, I, I can flip back and forth, but uh, we'll have to do them sequentially. So I'm going to put the park districts up and hopefully, can you see the park district overlay? Yes. Okay, yes. good. So this is uh, again, group member Kim's map. I'm going to show the numbers. You see, if, if you can sort of highlight with your cursor, uh, Mr. Munson, the East Bidet Makaska neighborhood, which is the indentation at the top of District Six. Right, right here, right. right here. Yeah. Again, that that's what I'm talking about. Uh, I think just about everybody moved that from four to six to even out those populations. So again, what I'd like to do is say, if there's no objection, we'll proceed to the next item, and if there is objection, we can discuss and vote if necessary but it takes us a long time to vote. All right. The other things, the other things that the maps have all had in common is moving um, District 3, a portion of District 3 taking away from District 1 because District 1 is too big. So um, the question I think is where we divide uh, where we divide the line of what we're moving from one into three. Can you can you zoom in on that, Mr. Munson? Yes, I can. Is that is that good? Can you go again? Yep. I I think our goal there should be to um, obviously we're cutting into a neighborhood. Um, can we? take an entire neighborhood or can we put the line at what an obvious boundary would be? And I believe, um, I'm trying to read the street name at the north of the northeast of District 3. Is that university? Th this is university, university right here. Yeah, yes. that's university. And overlay the neighborhood maps on that if you would. Okay. So we've taken a portion of that neighborhood, but only about half, but it's a fairly um, definite demarcation using University Avenue. And I know because I tried, if you take the entire neighborhood and move it over, it, it makes uh, three too big and one too small. Um, can can we switch and look at um, group member Johnson's map? I'm just wondering where you drew the line, group member yeah, Johnson. Or maybe you can comment. Save. It was also to University Avenue. Um, we may yeah, have even had the same uh, north-south boundary as well, or very close to it. Yeah, it looks uh, pretty similar. So this this is group member Johnson's right here. And here is uh, group member Kim's. And I think both of you had the north-south line at the neighborhood boundary. Is that what yes, you were calling? Yes, that was my intention as well for that. So is there any objection to um, yes. making the, the, the section of three that moves, that takes, three takes away from one bounded by the neighborhood boundary on the west and University Avenue uh, running northwest to southeast. Commissioner uh -huh. Sander, um, 
I, I was able to move that and maintain balance, uh, but I understand your argument that university is a good boundary. Again, my whole purpose was to keep neighborhoods together. So in some cases, we are going to have to split them. Um, and I mean, I'd be fine with that, but I don't think it's... Volume, I cannot hear. Volume. Okay, I'm having problems with my husband's headphones. <laughs> anyway, um, let's see. I, I think it's possible to keep that neighborhood together, but I understand the argument about universities. So, but I just don't want people to think it's not possible to do it. I think it is, but that would be fine with me. Member Schwarzkopf, did I hear you had a comment? may be muted, we can't hear you. Sorry, excuse me. I would like to check um, the two boundaries that I drew there and see if where they came in. Can we check that for a minute? Sure. Uh, we, yes, let's see. Out. You are, here you go. This is your latest one. Yeah, no, let's put the, um, the, the um, neighborhoods on top of that. Okay, well, I'm gonna to have to open it in district or to do that. Okay. So that's okay, no problem. All right, let's put the neighborhoods on and I'll just make it a little bigger. Okay. Yeah, we cut another neighborhood. Yep. Yeah, this cuts it uh, yeah. another bit in half. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I just wanna check, thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, I have a question about that proposal. And um, I'm sorry, who is this? Uh, Commission Group Member Rubenstein. Oh, sorry. sorry, go ahead, Member Rubenstein. Thank you. I just wondered, is there any, is there a park, um, an actual park that is affected by splitting up that neighborhood? Um, would it end up, you know, half in one part, half in another, or anything like that? I just think. Um, we should be considering the park district in terms of the parks that exist. Besides, I know the river is one long park, I know, but any other park, neighborhood not, parks? There are no parks that straddle um, University Avenue. I don't know what the North-South Street is there. Yeah, and that's the question. Um, let's see, I can make it bigger, but... Uh, I have a question. Can we... Pull up tell. a map of the city parks and have that as an, an extra tab to refer back and forth to. Which is what I did when I was working on my map. Is that, <laughs> is that clear, Mr. Munson? Yes, it's clear. I'm just not sure. Yeah, I can... just, I don't, I, I don't have, I'm sure the city has one and I can get it for the next meeting, but, uh, or no, for another meeting. But, but look at the data layers. There's nothing in this, in district here that can do that, is there? No, no oh. there's neighborhoods, park districts, and the, the wards, yeah. Okay. Can you see what the North-South Street is on I the think, West? I think, it's, I think it's Oak. You know, I just, I'm gonna have to put my glass <laughs> to see it, so. Yes, that's that's Oak Street. Right, right here, Oak. Okay. Um, so again, I'll ask if there's any objection to making that discrete portion move from one to three. Hey. Hey, did you call me? Yeah, um, no problem. Uh, Carrie, I'd love Andy. to... Andy, please mute yourself. Thank you. So hearing no objection to that, uh, whose map are you in now, Mr. Munson? I am in uh, group member Kim's map. The other big question seems to be the dividing line between three and five. Can you uh, switch between neighborhoods and show park districts instead. Uh -huh. All right. 
Oops. And then zoom in on the in the Longfellow neighborhood there. The portion on the east side that group member Kim has moved. Uh, you can see there where District 3 used to come down into the Longfellow neighborhood to the end of the neighborhood and uh, group member Kim has moved the boundary up to, can you see the street, Mr. Munson? It is, I can't. I'm sorry, I literally can't see. It's the 24th, I just, I'm gonna make it even bigger. It's 34th, excuse me. 34th. Yes, Can 34th we switch and look at, at member Johnson's map? Uh, sure. Let's see, I gotta remember where I did that. that I suspect that boundary is the same because I moved it to the north end of the Longfellow neighborhood. It could be different. Oh, sorry, Johnson. Let's see. I'm starting to. All right, here's. Uh... And then can you show um, district boundaries? Yeah, well, I'm gonna have to open that one up then too. Here we go. All right, and let's put up the park districts. All right. Zoom in to see where. The only difference I noticed between uh, Green Member Kim's and myself was to the west of Hiawatha, I added more into District 5. That was the only difference. Otherwise, it was the same boundary on uh, 34th Street for Longfellow. Um, if the numbers work out, we're, we're splitting uh, the Longfellow neighborhood anyway. So it's a matter of, of whether it's split a little more or a little less. I think the purpose was to not split Longfellow from both uh, Pepper Kim's map and my, my own. Oh, I'm sorry. Switch, switch to the neighborhood view. Okay. And can I point out something? Um, yeah. where, the, where the word Longfellow appears, right uh, between the G and the F and the E, there's a, that's where the park is. So the, the park, oh, right here. Longfellow Park, right. Longfellow Park would be um, um, you know, the people who live across the street from it would be in District 3. Um, but I, I agree with this line being drawn here, it adding it to the Howe neighborhood. So it looks like, um, Sorry, flipping back and forth between maps, as I'm sure you all are too. The um, member Kim's map stops the change at Hiawatha. Yeah, so, right here. Right. Which at least to me makes a little more sense because it does keep the neighborhood together. The neighborhood to the west of Longfellow, which is how, isn't it? I believe we we united how in one in one park district with both of these plans. Uh, just as an aside, the the one reason that I did add additional uh, population in was just to balance the numbers more closely, uh, and since there were already boundaries further to the west that divided up neighborhoods. It didn't seem like this was doing any more than that, but it certainly opened a discussion on where that boundary should be west of Hiawatha. But I think maybe, you know, is there a disagreement about, you know, cutting off at the top of the Howe neighborhood might be one part of the discussion. 
Any comments? This is member Davis Carter, commissioner. Uh, yeah, yeah, we can have a discussion about why Longfellow's community is intact, but how how did it come up to the decision of cutting off how community just like the young man just stated? Can What's you show it? neighborhoods again? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So here are the neighborhoods. I'm gonna make a little smaller. So Longfellow there is intact. Yes, and how is right here? I'm sorry, where is how? Um, here's the where it's named, but I think this is the entire how right here. So how is intact yeah. in this map? Okay, thank you. That's what I was thinking, but I wasn't for sure. Okay, and Longfellow, this, I'm sorry, this is Davis Carter again. This is Long, Longfellow's intact in too, correct? It's, yes. Okay, all right. Mr. Munson, whose map are we looking at now? This is member Kim's again. Comment member Newhouse. Go ahead, member Newhouse. Um, extending the line through the bottom half of the Corcoran neighborhood as one of the maps proposed would actually cut a park. The one that's just south of South High School campus, it would actually cut through the middle of a park. Member Johnson, I think that was your map that extended the boundary into the Corcoran neighborhood. Yes, it was. I mean, if there certainly was a, a park that was divided, I'm glad to hear about that. Um, as a just a, a quick point, though, you know, would it be possible to take a look at the the population distribution? Because um, I believe between three and five, um, it ended up that five is I don't want to say substantially below, but it did feel like it, it should have a little bit more population added. I think there's a question of maybe where that would come from. But again, a chair like as you pointed out, we do have some room within the five percent as well for these types of things. Uh, but if you go further west, uh, the Powderhorn neighborhood has also been been cut apart. I, I think we run into the difficulty though of Powderhorn Park is is a very large park if we're thinking about the borders there too. And if we go further over, Central is also divided uh, in the current map and also in the proposed one here. Correct. And as you note, they're also divided in the current map in addition to the proposed map. So um, that could be one thing we would look at in our final map is whether it's possible to um, reconcile those such that the neighborhoods were not divided. And George, uh, I think that on my first map, I tried to uh, keep the Butterhorn Park closer together. I think I did that on the first map. Um, let's see. I think that is right here. Yeah. See, I dropped it down and I tried to keep it closer together. I moved farther up in, um, on the um, right hand side. You're going to have to go to District uh, R. Mr. Munson. Okay. And Chair Clegg, uh, this is Commissioner Sandberg. I'm sorry, I have even a few minutes. Um, I think my map also kept all those neighborhoods together. They slid some of the others in other places, but um, I, you know, I, I think it's good to look at the neighborhoods because they usually are very respectful. Of Can you show the neighborhood boundaries, Mr. Munson? Yes, I can. So this map keeps Powderhorn together, but then splits the the neighborhood to the west and east and east. Yeah, I was primarily interested in trying to keep park districts together or in around parks together rather than neighborhoods because neighborhoods again more relate to the city council whereas people around the park more relate to the park. Yeah, the that that map uh, west of it cuts Corcoran uh, 
as best I can see with my eyesight, Corcoran and Standish uh, both get split in that map, just, yeah. just to the west of Hiawatha. Right. So Commissioner Schwarzkopf, at least from my perspective, I would prefer the ones that kept uh, Corcoran and Standish together. And, okay, very good. And and then we would still we would have to split the two neighborhoods to the west, but they're already split now. No. Uh, we can we can look for a better solution if if we want when we come up with our final map. But good. for our minimum change first draft, that would be my preference. I have no problem with that. So again, either the Johnson solution or the Kim solution seem to work. All right. Yeah, um, reference. Here's uh, member Cams and here's member Johnson's. So the only difference here is that member Johnson's splits. Um, you're going to have to make this bigger. Okay. Let's And member Kim's does not. Yeah, here's. Uh, I think I think uh, member Johnson also said that when when we isn't that where the park might split a park, in which case, um, I think he said that he prefer not to. If I'm if I heard him correctly, yeah, that's exactly it. If there's a park that's split in half unintentionally with this, it's hard to get that detailed <laughs> but certainly split a park apart. Yeah. That's something I, I'm open to discussing. And again, I will stipulate too, if this is an initial conversation for the preliminary map, I mean, I'm very happy to go with um, group member Kim's map on this and revisit the population issue um, down the road once we have everything else said. Is there any objection to going with um, member Kim's solution, which was um, did not split the Corcoran neighborhood? Can you blow that up a little bit, Mr. Munson? Sure. So the park district boundary would basically follow Hiawatha. Without objection, we'll... I, I think that the, the um, splitting Powderhorn and Central neighborhoods along 36th Street makes good sense because 36th is a major thoroughfare there and um, and that keeps all of the Powderhorn Park intact. Um, and um, I think that many many of the residents who live south of 36th Street might feel that, that that's a, an okay uh, split because- And where the, is the split? I can't read the-, the so so I, Where the I word Powderhorn right, is, right, is 36th yes, Street. So right so along here. That's so it's at 36th Street in this map. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes, 36. This is a thoroughfare, which I, as I recall, is why the line is there. So, is there any objection to adopting that as our solution for the 3 5 boundary? Hearing none, let's let's go downtown and see if there are any changes there on Mr. Kim's map. Um, Mr. Kim did not make a change downtown. I think, Member Johnson, I think you did. Uh, can we pull up the uh, the data layer instead for the current boundaries? Because I think that would highlight the difference between uh, two and and yes. four there. There, thank you. Thank you. I think uh, both uh, group member Kim and myself both made similar changes here on that border. Right, let's look at yours too. And this is, so th this is group member Johnson's and here's group member Kim's. Yeah, it looks very similar. 
Um, and group, group member Kim, maybe you can discuss your reasoning on it. Um, I left, the only reason I moved those two uh, tracks into uh, District 2, just because they're on the other side of 394 there. I mean, you can actually see target field written on it. It didn't move a lot of population, but it seemed to simplify the border. But maybe you could talk about um, your reasoning on moving the North Loop boundary, because that's the only difference between our maps up in this area. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I pretty much was just following the North Loop uh, neighborhood boundary. Um, that's all I was thinking. Um, just keeping it simple here. Uh, if there was some sort of overarching reason why uh, the previous or I guess current map split didn't follow the neighborhood boundary, I'd, I'd certainly be open to hearing that. Uh, but not being aware of one, I simply went with the, uh, the neighborhood boundary. Can we see the neighborhood boundary overlay? Yep. Okay. And let's do that on the so, other one too. So when I was drawing the line, I was following the boundary of um, um, the, the main road there. So there's, um, and I can't remember what it is, but it, I think it's North, it's Memorial Drive or which is 55. It comes in on, on the left and then kind of angles off um, towards the river, including, so to, to cut off some of District 1 and add it to District 4. Mr. Munson, whose map is this that we're looking at? This is Member Johnson's map. Um, so this Member, is Member Johnson Kim. Splits, yeah. splits the North Loop neighborhood and Member Kim does not. Yeah. Any thoughts on that? Which people prefer? Me at Can I ask a question, Chair? This is um, Member Davis Carter, Commissioner to um, Johnson. Is there a reason why you did not split up the, the North Loop and Kim did? Yes, there is. Um, I, okay. I certainly did not want to split up neighborhoods if I didn't have okay. to. I mean, the Corcoran one was another example. Um, one of the issues that I was looking at is population, and this is probably a, a, a bigger picture question. And um, Mr. Munson, would you mind going to the population tab on, on my map? Yes, I will. This is your map and we will look at population right here. Thank you. And I was trying to balance these as, as closely as possible, but one consideration that I was looking at was besides just can we balance them within the 5%, if we sort of consistently had some of the districts that were below that, that does mean that they have more power per voter in those. And I felt that that was something at least to, to have a conversation about. And that's why I was more aggressive about trying to get these relatively close. Um, and maybe you could actually show the same, um, especially for in this one, the evaluation, because I believe that does talk about, you know, some of the voter, you know, demographics and things like that. But there is a difference that if we have, um, you know, consistently the whiter neighborhoods and certainly the whiter than districts that have the populations that are under versus the ones that have a larger um, BIPOC population. So that was one of my considerations when I was drawing the district boundaries. Thank you, sir. Makes sense. And, and can you look, compare um, member Johnson's map to member Kim's and look at the um, BIPOC population in district two for both okay. of those? For district two, okay, district two is right here. And then so here is member Kim's right here. All right, and what's the number for the black population in that? So um, District 2 is 34.6% for member Kim's and 35.2% for member Johnson's. And then that was also, again, because there's different ways to slice this data, I know it gets very nuanced for this. But yes, voter age population is one, also the general population um, by race, and then again, population as a whole. I mean, all those different things are, I think, things we consider. Again, I don't want to fight over <laughs> the North Loop being divided for, you know, an hour. Uh, but these are some of the things that I was thinking about for how to divide this up and sort of what were the most important factors. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. 
One. Chair, Chair Clark. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Perry. Yep, so I'll, I'll just throw my two cents in on this. Um, I think the numbers are pretty close and I would favor trying to keep the neighborhoods together if we can um, as a general rule. So I would favor uh, group member Kim's map at this point. Thanks. Thank you. I, I was remembering that one thing um, some people complained about at our last, and it was a ward map, not a park district map, but is that um, they thought we had created what's called what they call a poverty ward, um, that being the fifth ward, because the, the fifth ward that we had created, while it was it became a minority opportunity ward, it also encompassed um, essentially mostly poor areas, which is not something that we see in our census data. But here, the North Loop is a, it tends to be a wealthier a wealthier area than much of the rest of the second park district. So um, I'd like to keep it in the second if we could just to avoid creating that kind of a poverty district. Anybody sure. else? Chair sure, Clegg. Go ahead, Ms. Bichoun. Um I just want to bring something up. I didn't I didn't realize I didn't see this issue until I was looking at the map. Um, the charter was changed the, through that plain language charter amendment. And before the charter was changed, there was no requirement for the park districts to be not more than twice as long as wide. Um, but under this new provision of the charter, it states that uh, the provisions of section 2.2, which relate to wards, which include that provision that it should not be lo longer than, you know, tw more than twice as long as wide, um, that those provisions uh, apply as far as possible to redistricting park districts. So that is new language in the charter that that all the provisions that relate to the words are supposed to apply to park districts as far as possible. So I wanted to bring that up because that district two appears to be uh, longer, probably more than twice as long as wide. And I know that the charter amendment was, the plain language charter amendment was supposed to be just a change to language and not substance, but I see this as a potential issue here. And I'm sorry that I didn't notice it earlier. The language does say as far as possible. Correct. I mean, the the alternative, if we wanted to make uh, District 2 wider, we would have to go across the river. Correct. Which to me is a pretty fundamental change. Uh, Member Kozak. Uh, Mr. Chairman and, and uh, Ms. Michoon, I think, if I'm not mistaken, is there was there not some uh, court description of how that two for two by one provision uh, actually worked? Because if you look at the widest part of the district, uh, District Two down in the south end, uh, my guess is you would be pretty close to two by one. Uh, if you did that, I think there was a way to measure it. You're allowed to use the widest part. And so we'd have to take a look at that, but I, I, I see one part of where you could really stretch and you'd be pretty close. Yes, there is that uh, one case um, that I talked about in my presentation, my training. Um, so you would take it you look as far west and as far east as you can to see where those lines would be. So as far west as that little knob that's sticking up toward the northwest, you would start from there and then you would go all the way over to at the bottom. Yeah, that little point there. So you would measure basically that distance from west to east and then you would do the same for the uh, the from the top to the bottom, yeah. of course, you got that very 
you got a parallel line. You just have a horizontal line so you, at the north, so you would start there and you would go down to the very tip. You can see that. Yeah, yeah exactly. So you would take those measurements and then see if, you know, the length is more than twice as long. Yeah, as more than uh, twice as long as the width. And I, I, it looks like it might be longer than that. So I just wanted to bring that up because I don't want there to be any challenges on that because that is a change, brand new change to the charter. Uh, to me, comment, to me Member Kim. A pretty fundamental change for to have uh, District 2 or any district uh, cross the river. It's such a natural boundary in the north, north part of the city. And um, I think we could defend that given the flexibility and as much as possible language. Uh, and I'd rather try to defend it than, um, you know, we could move the Nicollet Island East Bank neighborhood into Ward, into District 2. That would give us some additional East-West leverage. Uh, but it's also got quite a significant population because of all the population on the East Bank. So probably. Sure, throw out. Yes. This is Member Kim. Go ahead, Member Kim. Uh, so I did a very crude estimate of the east, west and north, south kind of checking for that compactness. Uh, I did it in Google Maps to the best of my ability, which was very imprecise, but I don't think it violates the two to one ratio. I can, um, don't know if I have it readily accessible. I can try to show my work for that at a later point, but I, I don't think especially adding that little extra bit of the north loop that I did to keep the neighborhoods together. I think it actually satisfies it. It's adding that little knob up there uh, kind of gives us just enough leverage, I think. Well, let's let's make a note to confirm that as as we discuss our final map. Um, but that uh, to me, that's another good reason to to keep the north loop together as it gives us a, a little bit farther stretch to the east. Chair Clegg. Yes, Commissioner Rubenstein. Thank you. I Just a brief comment. Um, this discussion just re-emphasizes for me that um, we continue to make our reasoning very clear and to talk these things through because when our rationale for choosing a line becomes clear, then it's less likely to be challenged. We hope. <laughs> and I contemplate that we would issue a report at the time that we do our final maps. And certainly if, if there were anything like that, where there was a park district in violation of the twice as long as wide rule, we would explain our rationale. So Member Johnson, are you okay with including the North Loop then in District 2? I, I would be fine with that. I think, again, the two to one ratio, I think is something just to double check. And I think one other thing I would just ask is that you sort of once we've had the conversations about the individual borders between these, we do look more holistically at what that means for the overall balance of population. Do certain populations in the city have disproportionate power? if that's the case as well, because there just are fewer people in particular districts than other. Is there any pattern to that? I think it's something I'd like to look at at the end, but it's only for this particular border. I think that makes uh, complete sense with the neighborhood boundary and other reasoning too that you gave. I, I agree and I think um, again, that's the reason we do preliminary maps is so neighbors can come and yell at us and said you split our lake in half. Huh? I mean, it's, uh, that'll give us a chance to fix those mistakes. Um, can you zoom out a little bit, Mr. Munson? So I think now we have agreed on the boundary between three and five. We have agreed in six to add uh, East Badame Casca uh, to six from four. We have agreed on the slight changes between four and two and we have agreed on what part of the east side will move into um, District 3. I think that covers everything. I'll ask um, Member Kim and Member Johnson.
I believe it uh, I does. Believe. Yeah. Yep. Please go ahead. I agree. Um, are there any other questions about this map or comments or suggestions for change? This would be the time, for example, to say, well, what happened if you move the boundary from 36 to, to 35th? Or, and people would point out, well, one's a thoroughfare and one's not, et cetera. But this would be the time if you want to suggest something or suggest further analysis and have Mr. Munson paint frantically, this would be the time to do it. And I'll just, now that you've um, pulled up, if I can, uh, the, the one issue that I did see just when you look at this more holistically is, you know, which of the wards, oh, sorry, excuse me, precincts or uh, districts, sorry, are above or below the ideal number. And we end up with, you know, five and also six, which are, you know, the most affluent of, of the districts, which end up, again, below the ideal by a, a decent portion, you know, 4% almost. Uh, and then we have two and also three, which are uh, the districts with the highest BIPOC population that are now above. Um, certainly one and four are between those. So I just want to point that out. I know they're within the margins, but I just wanted to make sure we are, you know, addressing that and just making sure we're having that that clear. Good point. Thank you. Anybody else? So I think we've adopted most of these changes by unanimous consent or by without objection. Is there a motion to approve this map as the preliminary park district map? Moved, Perry. Second. Moved. Second. Been moved. It's been moved and seconded. Is, is there any discussion? Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Commissioner Schwarzkopf. The, uh, the concern I have is the same concern I think that was raised by uh, Commissioner Johnson, and that is um, how important is it to really keep communities of I mean, neighborhoods together versus the amount of um, deviation. And I think that Commissioner Johnson was trying to do that. I was trying to do that. But it seems like it's more important not to worry about deviation, but to make sure neighborhoods don't get cut. I suspect that's one of the major things we're voting on right now. Well, I think what we're voting on is this map, um, but we'll, we can certainly have that discussion either now or later in considering the final map, um, because you know we could move the lines of five and six farther north to give them a more proportionate population, but then we'd be cutting parks in half um, and risking that kind of uh, neighborhood division. So we can talk about priorities between those two competing objectives as we work on our final map. Member Schwarzkopf, when, when you speak, if you could turn on your camera, that would be great since we're, we're on YouTube. Thank you. Well, hearing no further discussion, I'm going to ask the clerk to call the roll and this, this the motion is to make this the preliminary park board district map. Commissioner or group member Abbott. Group member Aaron. Aye. Group member Callanan. Aye. Group member Carey. Aye. Group member Cohen. Aye. Group member Davis Carter. Group member Garcia. Aye. Group member Ginder. Group member Johnson. Aye. Group member Kim. Aye. Group member Kozak. Aye. Group member Magan. Aye. Group member Newborn. Group member Newhouse. Aye. Group member Perry. Aye. Group member Rubenstein. Aye. Group member Russell. Aye. Group member Sandberg. 
Group member Schwartzkopf? Aye. Group member Smith? Aye. Group member Abbott? Group member Ginder? Um, sorry, group member Davis Carter? Aye. Group member Newborn? Group member Sandberg? And Chair Click? Aye. There are 17 ayes. Um, that motion carries. Congratulations. Um, that being said, I think the, the ward map is going to be more than twice as complex as this. So what I would like to do, and I'll work with Mr. Munson to send out um, a date and time, is schedule a second meeting for wards. So we can go through the same process, but it's going to be, you know, having uh, twice as many wards as districts uh, probably means it's going to be four times as hard. So I want to make sure we have enough time and to get something on the calendar now. So I'll work with Mr. Munson to do that. But uh, thanks very much, everybody, for participating this evening. I think this is a great first start and uh, gives us some ideas as to how we can proceed when we get to the to the ward maps at our next session. And Mr. Munson, remind us when our next session is. Our next one is scheduled for November 10th at uh, 4 p.m. Chair Clegg? Yes. I, yes, I have a process question. So we have our our first draft of our, our park districts. Um, and this is this published to the public? Um, wh what do, where do we go from here for the park districts? Mr. Munson? So I am I am going to. Correct. OK, I'm sorry. Yeah. This so is I, I district or, right? Yes, so I am going to go ahead and um, take um, member Kim's map and resubmit it as is on behalf of the redistricting group and it will be submitted in the um, submission gallery where all the other maps um, reside and then this will be the map that we present for the first public hearing on November 17th. Okay, the charter Thanks. also requires that um, we submit draft park district maps to the park board and uh, ask them if they have any comment. We are not bound by their comments. Uh, the last time we did this 10 years ago, we submitted the map and they had no comments. Um, but once we have this preliminary map uh, finalized, I would submit it. I'll send it to council for the park board so they have it and have an opportunity to comment before we propose a final map. Uh, Commissioner Clegg. Uh, yes, Member Cohen. Uh, I'm at a disadvantage um, visually because my computer is not working and my Geek Squad guy to repair it isn't coming in until the 11th of November. I would appreciate being mailed all the maps and written materials that I should have uh, that are going to be relevant to our November 10th meeting and to our uh, other meetings that may take place between now and November 11th. I could make a more positive contribution if I knew what I was looking at. We'll make every effort to accommodate you, Member Cohen, but uh, sometimes, you. sometimes, uh, you know, we had a four o'clock meeting today and people were submitting maps up until 3.30, so. Oh, I understand, I may, not, I may not get it all, but uh, every bit helps, okay? Okay, very good. Thank so you. between now and November 10th, uh, your homework assignment is essentially the same as it was today, but with respect to districts. So um, please, if you want to uh, propose a district map, and uh, you don't have to if you don't want to, but once you have finalized your own map in your own mind, put your name on it so we will have it uh, for consideration at our next meeting. Again, you don't have to. If you look at somebody else's and say, that's a great map, then uh, that's fine. We just want you to be able to look at what's been proposed, propose your own if you wish to, and then be available for discussion at our next meeting. 
Any more questions or comments? Hearing none and having completed all of our business for tonight, we are adjourned. Thank you very much.